What an exciting video. Okay, there are some traditions that happen on every voyage for Semester at Sea, and they're always super memorable and great days at sea and something you get to look forward to. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the top three Semester at Sea traditions, which are Neptune Day, Sea Olympics, and the Alumni Ball. So you know what you're getting yourself into and so you know what to pack for these things. And just basically like so you know how much fun you're gonna have on your voyage so if you like this video please subscribe to my channel so I know to keep making more videos and let's get into talking about this semester at sea traditions Let's start out by talking about Neptune Day and Sea Olympics because these are things that happen in the middle of the voyage and Alumni Ball happens at the very end. So these days, Neptune Day and Sea Olympics, you will not have any classes and they will probably happen during a long crossing. So what a long crossing means is that usually when you're on the ship, you get to a country, you get back on the ship for like five or so days and then you get to another country. So what is considered a long crossing is when you're on the ship for more than a week so maybe when you're crossing the Atlantic Ocean or going around the Horn of Africa, like those take a long time at sea. So Semester Sea likes to throw in fun things to spice up your life because when you're on the ship, you don't have any weekends. You just have A day or B day and you have class every day you're on the ship. So even if you have an eight day crossing, you have class every day in a row, which is sort of tough to handle. So that is why they have these activities to give you a day off from classes and to do something fun. So I'm going to talk about Neptune Day first because I had that one first on my voyage, but it really depends on the voyage, which one you have first, Neptune Day or Sea Olympics, because Neptune Day is based on when you cross the equator. So whenever you're crossing the equator, that's when you're going to have Neptune Day. So on Neptune Day, they wake you up super early and the crew is banging like pots and pans in the hallways and like banging on your doors and telling you to wake up. So that's a fun way to wake up for sure, really, really abrupt. So then you head up to the pool deck and you're supposed to have your swimsuit on. And then there's a parade of the crew again with their costumes and their like noisemakers. And then the deans go by and the RDs and anyone who has been on a voyage before is a part of this. Because what Neptune Day is, is that you're transitioning from being a polywog or like a new sailor, a newbie to the sea, to becoming a shellback, which means that you have crossed the equator and that you're like a veteran sailor. So polywogs are considered like slimy and gross and shellbacks are thought of to be the sons and daughters of Poseidon. So your head RD is gonna be dressed up like Poseidon and doing like a huge speech sitting at the other end of the pool. And then they're gonna have you line up and go through this like list of tasks to transition into a shellback and to prove that you were committed to Poseidon or something like that. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is have fish slime dumped on you and it's green and smells awful. And then you have to jump into the pool and swim across and then kiss a fish and then kiss Poseidon's ring. And then you are a shellback. And then throughout the rest of the day, there's fun things going on as well. A lot of people have their heads shaved this day because you're supposed to get rid of like your old hair so you can be a shellback and be like reborn but you don't have to do this by any means it's usually the guys that do this mostly and then a few girls every voyage or sometimes girls shave like the underside of their hair so it's like fun for like a ponytail or something or they shave a notch in their eyebrow just to participate in it but a lot of people shave their heads this day and it's fun to watch and it's fun to see what people look like afterwards and for the rest of the day you're free to relax and hang out with friends and then it's a big deal when we do cross the equator, especially if you get to cross at zero zero like my voyage did, and there's a buoy there and the ship will circle it. So you can say that you like circle the center of the world. It's such a cool experience and people take photos all day and just have a great time. Okay, so now let's talk about Sea Olympics, which is honestly even more fun. So at the very beginning of the voyage, like the second day, you're gonna be split up into seas based on your room number and the floor that you live on. So the people that live next to you are probably in the same sea as you and your roommate is also in your same sea, so you're gonna know someone, which is great. And these seas are sort of like your home base and you each have an RD and you do a lot of orientation things and like getting to know each other things with your sea, but this is also who is gonna be on your team for Sea Olympics. So the seas are like the Red Sea, the Black Sea, the Yellow Sea, the Adriatic Sea, the Bering Sea, and the Arabian Sea. Can't believe I remembered all of those. And I was obviously a part of the Red Sea. This is my Red Sea t-shirt. And you are not gonna know which sea you are in before your voyage, which sort of sucks because then you can't pack like the colors that you want 
for your C. So I had to buy this red shirt when I was there because I didn't have another red shirt that I wanted to wear during the C Olympics. So you could try to pack like your C's colors, like one shirt in every color. The colors are red, yellow, black, blue, purple, and orange. Or you could just buy one when you get there. That's also okay. I think it was like $10. And it's a good souvenir too. Like I like having this shirt. It's fun to have and wear. It makes me sad, but I like it a lot. But another fun idea is for you to bring like glitters in different colors because they're small and they won't take up a lot of space in your suitcase. You can still have team spirit or to bring different hair things or like fun accessories in different colors. But it's just hard because you don't know what color C you're going to be in until you get there. So with Sea Olympics, you're going to be competing throughout the day in different events like dodgeball and pull-up competitions and tug-of-war and spelling bees. And on my voyage, there was even a food eating competition, which was kind of gross, but kind of awesome. And these competitions change every voyage. So if you want to be a part of the team that makes up these competitions and kind of plans the Sea Olympics, then you should sign up to be a sea captain with your RD. And they're going to ask for volunteers and just let them know that you want to do that so you can plan Sea Olympics. And only a few people from each sea do those competitions. And then there's large group competitions as well. So the first large group competition is banner making and team spirit. So the banner making is something that the artsy people in your sea are going to do. And you make a huge banner based on the colors of your sea. And you make like a slogan and you present it. And then you get points for whoever is best. And then this is also a part of the sportsmanship points that you get. So you want to be a good sport when you're doing events and such so you don't get points taken away for sportsmanship and that you keep as many points as possible for your team. And then the next large group event is the cheer or the chant and everyone has to participate in this. And it's during the opening ceremonies that you present this and it's just you make up a cheer for your team and then you all do it together and it's a great way to have team spirit. And then the third big group event, which is the most fun in my opinion, is the lip sync competition. So your team is going to choose a song or a song montage and then create a choreographed routine while lip syncing. And it's always so fun to watch these. These happen at night and they get so many points and it's like the last thing that you can get points for. So people get really into it and really competitive and they're always so fun to watch. So these competitions happen throughout the entire day. And if you're not competing in one, you should totally go watch them because it's fun to cheer people on. And then you get points for everything that you win. And then these points get added up and then the top three teams get prizes. So on my voyage, the prize that the first place C got was that they got to get off earliest when we got back to our last port. So mine was in San Diego. So they got to disembark first and see their parents first and get their bags first. And they didn't have to wait in lines. And that was honestly pretty lucky. And then the second place team got a professional sunset photo shoot with our ship photographers with their C. And that was really cute and fun. And then the third place C got a movie night with popcorn and I think ice cream. And then they also got priority seating at the alumni ball. So these are awesome prizes, so you're going to want to try hard and try to win. So now let's talk about the alumni ball. The alumni ball is on one of the days that you have finals, and it's probably one or two nights before the very last night on the ship, the night you get into port. And everyone dresses up super nicely and does their hair and makeup, so if you're a girl, be sure to bring a dress, or if you're a guy, bring a suit and some nice shoes and such. And it's fun to get really dressed up with your friends because then you can take pictures to remember your friends with, and just have one last really fun night. And then there's two slot times that you can sign up for for dinner and there's like a 5.30 and maybe an 8 p.m. And with these dinners, they are the same dinners you would get if you did fancy dining in a different dining hall. Like there's always free food on the ship, but there is something called fancy dining you can sign up for that's like $35 and it's a five course meal and champagne. So that might be fun to do one time during your voyage, but the same fancy dinner is served to you on the night of the alumni ball. So if you don't do fancy dinner earlier, you will have it for free on the night of the alumni ball. So five courses, a great dessert and champagne. So it's so fun and so delicious. And the crew serves you and they put tablecloths down on all the tables and it's so fancy and so nice. So you sign up to sit with your friends at a table. And this is why I mentioned during the Sea Olympics prizes that it's kind of they're really good prizes because the third place team on my voyage, the prizes change every voyage too, by the way, but the third place team on my voyage got to have priority seating for the alumni ball. So they got to sign up first with their friends and choose the tables that they wanted. So that was super nice. And then there's a dance that starts at 10 PM up on the pool deck. And it's so fun. You just dance the night away with your friends one last time. And it's so memorable. And this is a great tradition on semester at sea as well. So that covers it for the three main traditions of Semester at Sea and the three main like fun days that you get to have. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below of any other videos you would like to see me make, and I will see you guys next time.